Hey everyone, this is Ryan Strong. This is my Milestone 8 completion video. Uh, we'll go over the Milestone list first. Uh, to start, we had the credit scene. Um, I had to adjust the speed to make the credits go up quite a bit faster. Um, I adjusted the speed to make it go faster, as I'll show you in the actual game. Um, my instructor mentioned that I could probably make it go faster than that for school purposes, but for anybody that may want to actually take the time to read the credits, um, the speed I had it set at was good. For the main menu, um, I pushed that to next week. Uh, I, I did some work on it that I'll show you, but I had to push it to next week due to another task. Same thing with timed events and camera pan. Uh, timed events, that's more so uh, trigger events than anything. Uh, I got a lot of them in there. Still need to do some adjusting on some of them though, and that'll be complete next week. Camera pan. I have the actual scene in there, of which I'll show when the game started, but it still needs a little bit of work before it's completed. The escape route. I had to kind of make the escape route feel more like an actual escape route, so I actually added a sign there to kind of indicate to the player that they were coming up on like a major uh, highway, so that should help with that a bit. Sharp turns. This is the reason that I had to push those other items back was because the the sharp turns wasn't functioning the way it was really intended. Um, so I added uh, another set of buttons for the actual turn for more of a sharp turn. And I'll show that when I get to that. And then fix respawn. Uh, come to find out there was an uh, issue with my actual respawn button. The, um, the button in the top left corner. Um, it was respawning the player in the correct location, but it was still having the player face whichever way they were facing whenever they had to hit that button. Whether like, So if they were upside down, they would spawn on the game upside down. Not very beneficial. So moving on, we'll move to <coughs> the game. We'll start with the start menu. For the start menu, I added this uh, sad box here. It's not something that would go into a final cut. Um, it's there more for instructor purposes so that they can mess around with it and see it. Um, but what I did with these buttons is I set it up to where when you hover over them, so I'll hit play, you hover over them in here and they kind of change color slightly to indicate that you know, you're actually able to do something with them. And when you click on them, they'll stay that color and it'll change scene. So it's an indication to the player, very helpful for the player. Then we get to my camera pan scene. This scene is pretty much an empty scene other than you have the skip button right here in the corner. Um, that allows you to go to the actual game scene so if you've already played this once then you can um, you can skip it and go straight to the game. Uh, but basically what it is is it's a camera that starts off over here at the finish and yeah, over here at the finish, and it pans around the the course here towards the mine over here, and then back up towards this bridge. And once it gets to this bridge, it pans across and goes pretty much straight for this mine here, and then it cuts around the mountain next to it and zooms in over here, and then zooms back out slightly to show you the first uh, main explosion of the game with a camera shake, which is an indication to the player that okay something's gone wrong there's uh... there's something going on that i might need to escape from or whatever the case may be um, the i'll come back to this uh, well, i don't need to come back to this one i need to go to this one okay so in here um, i made very minor changes i added a couple explosions to the game um, there's a nice explosion that happens over here near all of the let me just move over to it. It happens over here where you have the big clump of minecarts that are scattered about. Um, it's a something that happens pretty early on that the player can see when they're up on the ridge ahead, uh, behind, uh, to indicate that you know there's something that happened. Um, <coughs> I also had an explosion to go along with this cave here as well so that the explosion happens and then the minecart comes out. Very uh, useful. And then I also changed the position of that um, 
trigger volume for that actual minecart there to come out. It's actually closer to the middle of this bridge now, so that um, it actually gives the player the opportunity to see the minecart come out and realize that they need to try and avoid it somehow because it's um, it's going to hit them or they might hit it and wreck. So. move over here. I still have the two explosions over here that go off. Um, I like them. I think they add to the the actual scene so that when you first start the game you see the explosions go off that kind of continue along with the video that I'll show you in a bit or the camera pan rather. Now we'll go to the... all my stuff got moved around. My motorbike here. So, um, before I talked about adjusting the stiffness for the, the sharp turns to help with the sharp turns, that's still the case, um, but what happened was we actually did some changes. I got some help from the developer of the actual script, and he gave me some stuff, uh, a different script to utilize that's actually very beneficial. I'm going to get to the right part. I think I was at it. I just want to make sure. All right, so what we changed was these uh, friction volumes for the wheel. Initially, when you start the game, uh, or when I, when I put this in here, none of these items had an actual value to them. So um, adding these different values actually helped with the slip of the, of the bike so that it can actually hold on, have a better grip, and do those turns quite a bit sharper. So this is what was added. Uh, very beneficial. I've noticed a big improvement um, when when utilizing it. So I won't be able to show you it on this screen. It'll be easier to show on my... Um, I could show it in my sandbox scene briefly, but it'll be easier to see when I use it on the actual device. <clears throat> and I think that's for the most part it. Let me double check my stuff here main menu that that okay the escape route so for the escape route like I mentioned earlier I added a sign that's uh, a way to indicate to the player that it's it's their way out other than just the uh, the lights that you see here so I added this sign here 99 Tennessee and since this is a coal mine in Tennessee I felt it was best to use uh, a road sign that you would see in Tennessee and an arrow pointing up to it saying, hey, it's it's that way. Um, and then the respawn issue. For the respawn issue... Let me just find the button, make it easier and show it that way. So reset here. It's part of the game manager. And we'll open that script. I think it's actually already open. It is. So um, what I had to do was I had to go into my reload checkpoint here. And I had to, um, I ended up getting rid of, or I, I commented it out, but it's it's gotten rid of um, this PLR, uh, finding the player, and then changing its transform to the check pause. Because instead I place it down here. Um, just saying, you know, player, transform position. But the one thing I did not have, well, I didn't have any of this, but the main part that I didn't have was this here, the Quaternion Euler. The Quaternion Euler is what allows you to adjust the rotation of the actual um, object that you're trying to manipulate. So I had to add that to it. So we'll go to my sandbox scene here real quick. It's a super, super generic scene that I added, as you can see here. I added this button here. It's the handbrake from before. Uh, the only reason it is in here is because when I'm testing the game while I am on the computer, it's easier to be able to press this button to change the value of the bike when I need to. So I can kind of show you how that works. So what I noticed is um, first thing you can see if you look here at the stiffness you'll see it's at one you press the button and it is now up at three if you look at the bike as I turn from side to side while standing still it doesn't adjust the angle of how far you turn when you're pressing the button 
So it's more in the actual lean. Now there's a couple things here that I want you to keep an eye on. I'm going to do a, a turn while I'm going straight. Uh, I'm going to go straight. I'm going to start a turn, but I'm not going to press this button. I'm going to get up a little bit of speed. So if you watch the speed, and I'm going to start the turn, the speed starts to go down a bit. So you slowly start to slow down. All right. <clears throat> That makes it to where you're not really doing that sharp of a turn. It's it's pretty pretty wide turn. So um, go around here, and I can do this turn. It's pretty wide going around this tree and these objects. So if I press the button, I get my speed to increase, and I'm able to do a bit sharper turn than normal. He gets a little bit more lean going so that's one thing that uh, kinda want makes it easier for when you're actually playing the game so that's my sandbox so we'll go to the start menu and I will show you all of these things from beginning so we go to here I have the sound off on the thing for now because I don't feel it's needed uh, but we'll go to the sandbox first takes you right here, right to the scene that we were just at. Alright, now I can click here. The pause button, it still pauses the game like normal and pauses the music like normal. If I'm not really wanting to, maybe I just paused it because I needed to step away. And I don't want to hit that button again, I can just hit resume and it can, picks me right back where I was at. And then quit race, going to take me right back here to the main scene. So we'll start this main scene. And here's that first pan video. It's going to pan through the scene. Um, you're just going to kind of see the areas that the player <clears throat> races on. It's just kind of a indication to the player to kind of point off different areas. I have to adjust the video still um, a bit, but I wanted to at least show it off. And then you got that explosion and then the uh, camera shake there. You hit skip. Immediately brings you into here. Um, on the device you'll be able to see the explosion better. Not a problem. And then we can go through the race and I can't go through the race because I don't have I have touch turned off it's on or it's on touch not simple um, so I can change uh, I don't need to change that you guys have seen this race many times uh, last thing we'll go to real quick is the credit scene so what I did in the credit scene is I actually adjusted the text speed to go uh, up to 50 instead of the 30 that it was originally at and that makes it just so that it does this and I'll show you how much faster it goes so it's quite a bit faster uh, I feel like this is more a normal speed that you would see for um, like movies and such so um, I think it works out pretty well and the button here still works so you can go to main menu alright thank you very much